One of the best cures for anxiety is exposure therapy. And this is where you are essentially facing your problems head on and um, overcoming whatever the uh, the stresses are and particularly the symptoms are that happen when you are dealing with that problem. Now, I'm not saying that you should be, you know, if you've got a fear of sharks, go jumping into the ocean and start swimming with them and that will help you to overcome them. But at the same time, if you were to maybe put yourself in one of those cages while swimming with sharks, knowing that they're not going to try and attack you and eat you, then um, absolutely you can overcome your fear just through desensitization. So I want to take the opportunity in this video just to talk about the idea of exposure therapy and how desensitizing yourself to a problem can be certainly an option to help you to overcome it. So in my years of working in the dating communities and certainly working with different like dating coaches and life coaches and so on, um, a lot of the guys who tend to come forward, you know, they have these fears of, you know, talking to a stranger or talking to a woman that they're attracted to. Um, they certainly have that fear of rejection. They don't know how the person that they're going to talk to is going to react. Uh, a lot of guys have very different um, uh, ideas of what can happen. Um, you know, like one woman could be running away screaming, you know, or uh, another might just completely ignore them and um, uh, tell them to, you know, to, to F off kind of thing. And um, each of these things, you know, they are going to affect uh, a guy anyway, if they were to actually happen. But a lot of guys will future predict and already because they're thinking about this worst case scenario that's going to happen, they will avoid you know, talking to someone that they really like or miss out on opportunities because their social anxiety has gotten the better of them. So how do you deal with this sort of thing? Well, you essentially have to tackle it head on. You have to face your fears. So what a lot of guys would do is that they would go to someone like a dating or a relationship coach to help them to have those experiences. So I would split these experiences into uh, two versions. You've got your organic experiences and your artificial experiences. So organic experiences would be, you would be facing your fears just naturally. So let's say you are someone maybe who has a fear of heights and um, you work in construction, which, you know, you would have certainly have picked a very well, uh, well uh, uh, chosen job there if that was a scenario. But by working on buildings and, you know, being in those environments, after a while, you would very likely become desensitized to, you know, being in high places, especially if maybe you get more training and understanding of just how the uh, the safety works with your gear and your equipment and stuff then you're going to feel more comfortable around that fear or phobia. It's the same if maybe you've got like a fear of spiders, let's say. So if with spiders, you know, if you're uh, someone who's not around, you know, being in the garden a lot, or um, perhaps maybe, you know, for whatever reason, you have just got a fear of the things, you don't like them, they look creepy to you and stuff then to overcome them, then you would go through the artificial process, which would be where the scenario has been created for you very artificially for you to experience that fear or phobia, but handled in a more appropriate way. So with the spiders thing, you would probably then go to some spider... Uh, uh, enthusiast or or uh, maybe even actually I think at zoos um, they give you the experiences to hold like a tarantula or something and they can then train you and get you very comfortable in how to handle somewhat something especially if you've got something like arachnophobia so with that kind of artificial experience um, you would then be slowly eased into 
the uh, the fear or the phobia that you're trying to overcome and just nudging yourself a little bit further forward to that point that then the fear is taking place and you are helped through that scenario. So uh, the organic would be that you would just be facing your fear on your own and very naturally because maybe if it's maybe like a part of your job or part of your development, your own personal growth, where you're you're going to have to overcome it if you want to um, uh, be uh, better at who you are at a person or for your job. Uh, in fact, actually, another example would be public speaking um, as well. There are plenty of public speaking uh, events and workshops that do train people to work on their confidence and their anxiety of standing in front of a public audience and being very comfortable talking to people you know it's uh, I think there's even a saying that um, public speaking is like the biggest fear that anyone has and there is an element of you know being judged how do you feel about people watching you talk about something and maybe they are silently judging you some people can handle it but others get the spotlight effect and and uh, and whatnot as well and it can stress them out and as soon as they start getting stressed and that anxiety builds up, they struggle to think about what they want to talk about. So organic experience and artificial experience, they both though produce the exact same result, which is getting you to be desensitized to a scenario. So whether you are in a controlled environment or you have had to tackle it uh, just very naturally, either of them will bring you to that desensitized level. So what does that mean then by being desensitized to something? Well, once you've experienced uh, your fear or phobia several times and you've got to experience it, uh, I'm going to say in a more positive manner. So in a way that has given you more positive reference experience, telling you that, you know what, this fear that you had isn't so bad. You might have been future predicting a scenario that clearly hasn't played out. And now that you've got enough experience of that, it has told you that things aren't as bad as you think and that the chances of your bad scenario happening are even smaller and smaller than what you had imagined before. Uh, and that is especially if you haven't got that reference experience as well. So in the scenario of dating, um, if you are someone who does have a lot of anxiety, especially with, you know, talking to the opposite sex or speaking to someone who you're attracted to, uh, or maybe even uh, trying to ask for a phone number or something, but you just don't know how the person reacts, then you have to face that fear and you have to desensitize yourself to that scenario which in the case for dating, that can mean, you know, opening your arms to the idea and concept of rejection. So when you're working with someone like a dating coach, you know, it's safe to say that even the dating coaches feel uh, that anxiety themselves when they're approaching, they will most likely agree with me and say that, you know, that anxiety never goes away when you're going to talk to a stranger, but you can certainly manage it by managing the expectations of if I'm going to talk to someone, what is the likely scenario that is going to happen here? And what is the worst case scenario that is going to happen here? So when you're speaking to uh, to a woman that you like, um, in fact, even taking a step back, when you are working with a coach, they are going to have you talk to lots of people and you are very likely going to experience rejection. And what tends to happen usually in the uh, the first session when a guy is working with a coach or certainly in the first few hours or hour or two, they overcome that hurdle of talking to strangers by suddenly facing that fear and learning very quickly that, you know what, it's really not that bad. People don't care who are walking by they are doing their own thing. They are focused on their own lives. So the spotlight effect certainly disappears. And talking to people, your reactions aren't going to be that bad. And that's always a realization that people have that, you know what? It's just a conversation. Um, and people have the prerogative to 
walk away if they choose to, or just say thank you or no thanks and walk away. And that's usually the biggest thing that, that tends to happen or, or the very likely scenario that happens. So for the guy who is doing this though, he becomes desensitized to the reactions that he gets. Um, and this new realization again, that it's not so bad that people aren't, you know, running away, running away, screaming, you know, calling for help or emergencies or whatever, you know, none, none of this bizarre stuff. And, and don't get me wrong, there are some strange people out there in the world, but the majority of people are really good. And um, it's also just, you know, showing in a very respectful way that if you're going to talk to someone and you're complimenting them, you uh, are showing interest in them because you're curious about asking them out on a date. There is plenty of proof on the internet uh, and online that just shows, you know, what is possible. I can honestly say, like, I'd say about 99% of everything that I've seen and heard is all good stuff. There is so little, uh, if any at all, where there is a bad egg that unfortunately uh, does something wrong. Um, so if you are someone who does struggle with uh, anxiety or a fear or phobia, especially with you know, rejection or talking to new people, whether it be through socializing or speaking to a woman that you are attracted to, then exposure therapy is a really great option to overcome um, any uh, bad past experiences that you've had. You have to face your fear um, to become desensitized to it. But if you do find as well that that is something that is a struggle for you, then certainly um, integral eye movement therapy as just the final plug here for this video uh, is a great way to at least overcome those past traumas or negative experiences that you've had to just give you that extra freedom and um, uh, the ability to test for the change to then go forward and test some of these fears and phobias that you've got so you can then get that new referent experience and desensitize yourself to these past experiences that you've had as well. Because sometimes the only way to do exposure therapy is to first work on the problem at hand that may be preventing you from moving forward. And if you can do that, then absolutely that is gonna take you to where you wanna be with your results. So I hope this video was, uh, was interesting for you. If you can like and subscribe to the channel and uh, look forward to certainly more videos that I'll put out. But I would love to hear in the comments below what kind of exposure therapy you have certainly experienced or thinking about experiencing, and maybe even some of the, what are the fears and phobias that you are currently facing, that you are struggling with, that you would love to get rid of or overcome too. So until then, I look forward to your responses and uh, look forward from me with more videos going forward.